with it. With it. Quit it. What? With it. We about to turn up in this bitch. What am I winning or quitting today? NBA All-Star Russell Westbrook is currently trailing the Blazers 3-1 to in the first round of the playoffs and doesn't want to talk about it or stop shooting. Now OKC is facing their third first round elimination in three years. Joy, Russell Westbrook is too stubborn to win an NBA championship. Win it or quit it. I, you know what? I think I gotta, I gotta win it. <sighs> I gotta win it. I'm and happy, that doesn't but also change. Sad. It doesn't change how I feel about Russell Westbrook because <laughs> Russell is one of my favorite players in the NBA, if not my favorite. Mm-hmm. And I know that kind of contradicts my whole like I like winning thing, yeah. but I also like being entertained. Right. And he is an entertaining player. Mm-hmm. So. I don't think that what's happening is taking away from him as a as a overall uh, player. Like I think he's going to come back next year and have a relentless regular season, and <sighs> I, he may average another triple double. But what's happening in the playoffs for Russell is is pretty bad. Like you can't have this many first round exits and yeah. still be in the conversation. I, with the with the best in the league, like and and unfortunately he's going up against Damian Lillard, who is just balling right now and, and an ultimate teammate. He's he's not he's not wasting time because Russell Westbrook's talking about making the right play, and that's why he's passing the ball and moving around. He's there. The passes aren't leading the points. His, it, you know, does that make sense? Well, to me? The, the the problem is everything that's happening on the court is really bad for Russ. Like he's he's averaging this postseason, he's averaging his lo- second lowest scoring average, twenty one point three points. Mm. His lowest field goal percentage, thirty six point three points. We all know what's happened to his free throw shooting. He was five for twenty one in Game Four, zero for seven, showing in the second half. That's the worst of his playoff career. And and a loss in Game Five will mean three straight first round eliminations, as I just said. Mm. So it, overall, like what's happening on the court is not good for Russ. No. But you know, Russ is an athletic point guard who wasn't a traditional point guard in college, but he is a point guard as we know. Mm-hmm. And he he's just slipped from being one of the top in the league, and and uh, it's it's just obvious on the court. But I don't think it takes away from Russ overall as a player because he's going to be a Hall of Famer. Yeah, and he has made it to a finals, and he's being compared a lot to Allen Iverson. I kind of am starting to agree. Like I really, so, I'm seeing a lot of parallels in their career and also in their persona. Like Russ is whatever happens in the postseason with Russ, and whatever happens for the rest of his career, he's an athletic point guard. As we know, athleticism diminishes. Mm-hmm. That's not you. Then you have to have a skill, right. and that the league is getting away from overall athleticism in general. It's becoming more of a skill and finesse game. Three-pointers. Which is why people are a little bit hesitant about Zion Williamson, because they want him to develop a skill, because in college he is relying on his athleticism, which only works for a certain amount of time. You can have success, but not sustained success, because that's going to diminish over time, as we know. But to me, Russ is still, still important to the culture. Like, Russ is defiance. He's the villain. And I don't know if this speaks to to what's wrong with me but I, I i like i root for the bad guy i need a strong villain yeah like the, if you could say whatever you want the reason why the batman series are good is because the villains are awesome big facts big facts let me know when i lie no yeah you have to have different characters and different storylines and they can't all be great guy on the great teammate mm. and we all just get along Steph and love Curry, each other baby, and we out. make all of our shots and we do little dances yeah. after we make our shots from half court. We can't all be the same. Okay. Right. There's no two people alike. Therefore, there's not going to be any two athletes alike. There's yeah. going to be similarities. Kobe Bryant was compared to Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm. I don't think Kobe Bryant is anything like Michael Jordan. Did they have similar uh, playing styles? Sure. But Kobe is very much Kobe and MJ is MJ. Yes. Okay. At the yes. end of the day, those two are different for many, many reasons. We mm-hmm. don't even have to start listing. Okay. Russell Westbrook is Russell Westbrook. He he's he's defiant. He's unapologetic. He wears crazy outfits to games. He kind of started that whole thing. Yeah. He gets into it with fans. He doesn't want to answer Barry Trammell's questions. Like he has his own he has his own identity within the culture. Right. And I'm okay with that. Yeah, like, I'm okay the, with it. The more you talk, aside from getting into it with the fans, the more I see the similarities between him and he and Allen Iverson. Like a guy who's important to the culture, change the dress code in a weird in a weird way. Fundamentally, De- definitely all to himself and a, a lot of a stat guy. But Allen Iverson found his best season when Larry Brown came in, 
And I say that to say a lot of the problems with Russell Westbrook and how he's a player right now is OKC's fault and the Thunder's fault and how they've put that that whole team together. Because right now, an all-star in Paul George isn't even showing up in the playoffs. And Paul George being called Playoff P is one of the biggest jokes slash like reverse like reverse curse things ever in the NBA. Because what does he do in the playoffs? Thank you for that wonderful transition, okay. Brandon. Yes. Because I do think that another element to this situation with Russell Westbrook that is getting completely overlooked is the Oklahoma City front office mm. and Billy Donovan, for that matter, are just it, never mentioned in this entire concoction. Right. Like they got they got Paul George, mm-hmm. which is great. Okay, does this all fit? Is it working? When you look at the Oklahoma City Thunder, are they built to beat the Warriors, the best team in the Western Conference that they're in? No, Mm-mm. not not really. Mm-mm. You also chose Russell Westbrook over Kevin Durant and over James Harden. You had yes. James Harden, Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, all on your team in Oklahoma City. And you squandered it. <sighs> Yeah. You chose Russell Westbrook over Kevin Durant. That's clear. That's clearly the reason why Kevin Durant left. Because all this talk about, like, you know, he just wanted to go play with a winner. I don't think he did. I think he, there was clearly a division between Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant. There's a style of basketball that he wanted to play that was that Russell Westbrook is incapable of playing, clearly. No, I think that Russell would be capable of playing the style of basketball that would would translate to winning in Oklahoma City if when he had come into the league there was an established voice that would guide him that he respected he's not just some That's like fair. maniac mm-hmm. he has been enabled to to have this kind of control over the organization which i mean you give that kind of power to most people 99% of people are going to do what they want with it. That's uh, LeBron has. Yeah. It just so happens that LeBron's the best player in the NBA for the past 15 years. So he's he's been able to push that in the right direction. And even he still needed help. And he still needed Pat Riley to sit there and be like, no, this is what we're going to do in order to get rings. Well, Russell Westbrook has proven that he doesn't take anyone's advice. But and I'm that's, saying, that's, why that's, would he at this point? He's not going to change at this point. And who created that situation? Oklahoma City. After getting bounced so, out in the first round, so, you think so you some changes Durant, would happen. You don't have you don't have James Harden, so they they, they couldn't sign James Harden. Mm-hmm. So they traded him for Jeremy Lamb and Kevin Martin, and some draft picks that turned into Stephen Adams. They weren't going to give him max money. Yo, Kevin okay. Martin got buckets though. <laughs> Okay, I, I believe you. That two, those two names <laughs> scored. They baskets. traded Reggie Jackson and Kendrick Perkins for Ennis Cantor, Steve Novak, DJ Augustine, mm. and Kyle Singler. Reggie Jackson's good, good too. Um, Pistons. They traded Ibaka for Victor Lodipo, Sabonis, and Eva Slova. Uh, I mean, and they traded Oladipo and Sabonis for Paul George, which would be a good trade, except for it's it's not translating into any winning. Yeah. So th- so they have not put together a team, and they have lost great players like I don't think it, it it should go unmentioned that what the what Sam Presti and Billy Donovan have done there not that it's been a disaster like they are no. competitive yeah. but it's like this is not all Russell Westbrook no Russell Westbrook arguably has been so good and the winning has come from him being so good that it is shadowed and covered up a lot of these terrible front office moves I, I mean since OKC's been OKC right um all right what's next the Celtics and the Bucks did the right thing and swept their opponents while the Sixers, the Raptors, and the Trailblazers look to win their first round playoff matches tonight. I'll put my Miss Cleo hat on and say, Joy, the Bucks Celtics series will have more games than the Eastern Conference Finals. Quit it or quit it. Mm. Hmm. 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 That's interesting. I wasn't mm. expecting that question. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. Talking about the games. Um. No, I'm going to quit it. I think the Eastern Conference Finals go seven also, and I think the Bucks and Celtics go seven. Okay. So, um... Okay, okay. Wait, wait. Am I quitting it? So it's more because it's even? I don't know. Uh, oh, yeah, the sorry, point is, push. I'm yeah, very... Yeah. It's a push, yeah. <laughs> I'm very excited for Bucks and Celtics. Yes. I think Sixers-Raptors is going to be really fun, too. Yeah. But... It's more It's more exciting because of the drama. The, like, the, they're the, just the weird players. The Bucks and players. Celtics, man, like, it's all this talk about ignoring mm-hmm. um, Milwaukee all season long. And, I mean, they sweep the Pistons, which, like, whatever. That was a bore fest. We all know that. Like, we're just... That's good. Okay. Sorry about that. We're moving on. No. Sure. We're moving on. No, yeah. The Celtics... The Celtics have everyone this year, mm-hmm. so this is a big test for Brad Stevens because yep. it's like you have everybody here. He's supposed to be like the whiz kid of the NBA. Yep. Like you need to beat the Bucks. Yeah, you need to. I, this is this is nothing less than a failure if the Celtics get knocked in the second round. I don't want to hear it. 
because the Bucks have been ignored all season long, and Giannis has a good team around him, and they should be able to to match up with them and take them down. So you think the pressure is more on the Celtics? 100% is more on the Celtics. 100%. If Milwaukee gets knocked in the second round, it might be like, yeah, maybe Giannis can't really carry a team, but is people are people really going to bang on Giannis? No, they're not. The, Cel- the pressure is 100% on the Celtics, and that's why I find this this series to be fascinating. I can't wait for it. But if they lose to the Bucks, that's losing to the best regular season team and a team that has put up all kinds of statistics of the greatest point differential in in a sweep beating the Pistons just now. Like these are that's a real team. Uh-huh. And still that's been completely ignored and, and completely completely undervalued yeah. all season long. The Celtics have Kyrie and Brad Stevens. Gordon, and Gordon Hayward, Hayward. like it's, it. yeah. it's Boston. I'm telling you, all of the pressure is on Boston. If if they don't make this happen, it's going to be a big big deal. I'm really excited for it. And we have Roy- Warriors Rockets in the second round. Again, the second round's likely going to be better than the fi- than the conference finals. <sighs> yeah, like you said on the herd, it's more basketball, more good basketball. So obviously, it's going to be yeah. Because I was looking at the second round last year. There was no interesting games outside of the Rockets Warriors right. in the second round last year. Right. No, it's it's definitely going to be uh, really exciting. And the Warriors Rockets is going to go 7 as well. Hopefully everybody just remains healthy so we can get through that. Why are you looking like that? Well, Boogie's already hurt, but I got you. And <sighs> everyone else. Who's left? I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. I'm mostly I'm talking about the Rockets. I'm not even talking about the Warriors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, it's I'm interested in seeing Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons figure it out versus Kawhi Leonard, who who called him uh, Michael Jordan? Kendrick Perkins. Kendrick Perkins. Perk. Kendrick Perkins likened uh, Kawhi Jordan, Leonard to Jordan like Jordan esque. You know, gets to his spot. I've never heard that comparison before. It's not bad. I don't like anyone being compared to Michael Jordan. Okay, you know so that, but. the I am interested in that series as well. Obviously, yeah. like I think that the Raptors are gonna are gonna make it to the the um, Eastern Conference Finals. I actually think they're gonna make it to the finals. Spurs Blazers is like a toss up the entire time if yeah, the Spurs come out. We just give them to the Spurs. Uh, I mean, it's game by game, Spurs Nuggets. Who cares? <laughs> I mean, that's the, what we're all thinking. <laughs> It would be interesting Ashley's if there weren't a bunch of other interesting stuff. All of us down. I actually think it's more interesting if the Spurs win. It's definitely more interesting. Cool. Um, obviously, we know it's pretty much going to be the Blazers. So I'm 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 rooting for the Blazers because I don't think that they're getting the credit that they deserve. Yeah. I really actually think going into that series, everyone was like kind of feeling like it was going to be more competitive than it's yeah. turning out to be. Or OKC and it's, just wins. It's, it's yeah. like maybe yeah. it's time we just admit that the Blazers are a way better team than. The Thunder. Like, everyone's putting this on, on Russell Westbrook being terrible. Like, Blazers actually have a really, really good team. Yeah. CJ McCollum has been awesome. Yeah. Ennis Cantor's been huge for them. Mm-hmm. Like, they actually just have a better team. Yeah. Former oh. Thunder player, Ennis well, Cantor. Well, you know. Whoopsies. Some, 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 some things.